Starting a convo, whether it's with a beautiful lady at a coffee shop or with a prospective collaborator at a networking event can feel like diffusing a bomb for some of us. One wrong move and boom, you're out of the game. But that ends today, my friend. Today, I'm gonna equip you with the best conversation starters. These aren't gonna just be like your regular openers, mind you, they are your secret weapons. Each one is like a little door that you're gonna crack open. A door leading to the world of the person in front of you. And the best part, you don't have to be a mastermind to pull these off. All you need to do is be genuinely interested in the other person and have a bit of courage. You ready to transform your conversation game? Hell yeah. Well, let's dive into it then. <laughs> Chapter 1. Compliment her style. Looks. Starting a conversation with a lady isn't about rehearsed pickup lines. No, it's about being genuine. It's about appreciating what makes her stand out. You see a beautiful woman and you're drawn to her, right? But why? Is it her dress, her hair, or her intriguing aura? Pinpoint it, dude. Women put effort into their looks, and a compliment on that effort goes a long way. But uh, keep it genuine, dude. And I mean it. You don't want to be another faceless admirer showering generic praises. Notice something special about her? Something that strikes you? Uh, maybe a unique necklace, uh, unusual color combination, a uh, vintage dress? Say it. Just be cool. Don't just be casual. Make it offhand, as if you're commenting on the weather. Excuse me, but I couldn't help but notice your unique necklace. It's got a, it's got a real charm to it. Love it. Or something like, I gotta say, your dress really caught my eye. You got great taste. Bam! You just opened the door to a conversation. A genuine compliment feels good, man. It's, it's like a surprise gift of a regular day. And guess what? It often leads to a conversation. She might tell you a story about her necklace or dress, and there you go, you're talking, she's smiling. Chapter 2. A Thought-Provoking Opener Alright, moving on. You ever found yourself full of a room of potential collaborators, but not a clue of how to break the ice? It's actually not as hard as you're making it out to be. No need to ramble all eloquently or speak fluently about quantum physics. Instead, just hit them with something thought-provoking. The best conversation starters, in my experience, are the ones that stir curiosity, makes people pause and think. But it doesn't have to be something heavy like, Hey guys, what do you think the meaning of life is? Alright, it could be something simple yet intriguing. Uh, some maybe don't do this at like, higher class business events, but something like, if you could have a superpower to help you in your work, what would it be? It sounds a little silly, but... It's honestly not. It's interesting. It's fun. It gives you an insight into their thinking. You know, little moral scenarios. Maybe that's not your cup of tea? Alright, how about something like, What's the most unconventional approach you've used in your work? This question does two things. One, it gives them a chance to share a story, and everyone loves that. Two, it shows that you're interested in thinking outside the box. And who doesn't love a bit of creative thinking, huh? Whatever it is, the key is to make it about them. Not in a prying sort of way, no, but in a way that shows that you're interested in their thoughts, their experiences. Chapter 3. What conspiracy theory do you believe in? Get this, you're not the only one who loves a good conspiracy theory. They're like guilty pleasures. Some might deny it, but deep down, we all got one theory that we can't help but entertain. So, why not use this to break the ice over text? You're thinking, but it's a text, how intriguing can it be? You'd be surprised. Texting is not just about saying, hey, what's up? It's a whole world of communication out there, my friend, and you gotta tap into it. Start off with something like, Oh, this is random, but do you, like, believe in any conspiracy theories? Now, why does that work? First off, it's unexpected, and unpredictability, my friend, is intriguing. It's not the usual, what's your favorite food, BS. Second, it allows her to share an opinion. And believe me, people love talking and sharing opinions and stuff. She might be into UFOs, or... Maybe she's convinced that we live in a simulation. Whatever it is, it's gonna give you an insight into her thinking. So why the hell not give it a shot? Chapter 4. The Unusual Question You ever been stuck in a conversation that felt as exciting as watching paint dry? Yeah. Yeah, you've all talked to my dad before. You, you all haven't? Okay, well, you probably know who I'm talking about then. The usual, what do you do? How long have you been in the industry? God, it's a snore fest, right? Boring questions and people that ramble too much. Now, imagine turning the tables. Imagine a question that they've never heard before. Something that makes them go, Nah, that's, that's a good question. A question like, What's the weirdest thing you've learned while working in your industry? 
Why is this a brilliant opener? One, it's not a usual run-of-the-mill question. It, it really breaks that monotony. It's fresh. It's engaging. Two, again, it gives them a chance to share our unique story. And again, who doesn't love telling stories? They might tell you about a quirky client or a strange incident at work. Either way, it's going to be a hell of a lot more interesting than the usual. So where do you see yourself in five years? Oh my god, shoot me. Chapter 5. Ask her if you know her from somewhere, even if you don't know her. It's a bit of gaslighting. I know, I know, it's also cliche, but listen to me. It's cliche because it actually works. This one's a classic, and there is a reason that it's stuck around for as long as it has. Here's the scene. You're at the coffee shop or a bookstore, and there she is. A girl who's just your type. Now, you could be that guy who goes straight up to her and starts making small talk. Or you could be the interesting one who's a little mysterious. The one who starts it with, Excuse me, do I know you from somewhere? And here's why it works so damn well. First off, it immediately catches her attention. I mean, come on, everyone's intrigued when someone recognizes them, right? Second, it's non-threatening, non-invasive. You're not complimenting her on her appearance or asking her personal questions right off the bat. You're just starting a conversation. And that takes a lot of pressure off. Remember, the key is to sell it. Act genuinely confused, like you are sure you've seen her before, but you, you just can't place it. Be convincing, my friend. Most importantly, be lighthearted about it, though. It's a playful opener, and if she sees that you're just being friendly and amusing, she's more likely to engage. After all, who doesn't like a little mystery? Chapter 6. The Problem Solver I'm sure you've heard this one a million times. Be a problem solver, not a problem creator. Well, I'm here to tell you that this isn't just for the workplace. It's a brilliant conversation starter in networking events, too. Instead of starting off with the usual chit-chat, you could ask, what's the biggest challenge you're currently facing in your role? Now, why does that work? Again, let's, let's break it down here. For one, it shows you're interested. You're not just here to push your agenda, but to listen, to understand, to contribute. Two, it's a chance for them to vent. And believe me, people love venting about their problems. But the trick here is, is to not just ask a question, to engage with the answer. Be empathetic, give some input if you can. Offer a fresh perspective or suggest a possible solution. Don't do this just to impress them, but to build a genuine connection. People appreciate it when others show genuine interest in their challenges. Chapter 7. Ask her for the way to somewhere, and then tell her she seems super nice. You see, here's the thing. Starting a conversation doesn't always need to be grand or quirky. You don't gotta run into her with books in your hand. Sometimes simplicity does the trick. What's simpler than asking directions? But wait, there's a twist. So, you see a girl that you want to talk to, she's across the street, and on her way somewhere, maybe waiting for a bus, you gather the courage, you stroll up to her, and then you ask, Hey, uh, do you know the way to the nearest coffee shop? But why, my friend, would you do that? Why would you ask for something as trivial as directions? Here's why, it's non-threatening, it's casual. You're not putting her on the spot or making her feel uncomfortable. You're just a guy asking for directions. Once she gives you the directions, then you throw in the twist. You say, oh, thank you, you're the first one to actually give me a hand in this. Now what does it do? It transitions the conversation from just asking for directions to complimenting her personality, not her looks, which most girls find refreshing. Lays the groundwork for a more engaging chat. Now back to the field. You spot her, you want to talk to her, but you need a starter. Guess what? You've got a whole context around you to take inspiration from. So don't just stand there, use your surroundings, dude. You're at a cafe, ask her about her coffee choice. You're at a concert, ask her about the band. You're at a bookstore, ask her about the book she's big enough. I mean, the world is your oyster, man. Asking her something about the situation not only comes off as casual and relaxed, but also shows her that you're an observant person and you're interested in her actions. It's an easy and effective way to kickstart a conversation that can lead anywhere. Chapter 9, The Inspirer. Wait a minute. Imagine you're at a networking event with lots of professionals buzzing around, striking up conversations, businesses, marketing, sales, blah, 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 blah. Well, what if you then wanted to dive a little deeper? Maybe inspire a bit of introspection? That's where this opener comes in. What's one thing that, if you did it, you'd be super proud of yourself? Or professionally, what's one thing that you wish to accomplish in your life that you're really proud of? A bit different, isn't it? Why this question, though, you're asking? Uh, because it shifts the conversation from the mundane professional talk to personal aspirations. It allows the other person to share their dreams and goals, to discuss what truly inspires them. 
You could turn to the person next to you, extend your hand, introduce yourself, and then ask the question. It might catch them off guard, but that's okay. It's different, it's unique, and most importantly, it shows that you're not just about business, you're about personal growth as well. And also, you gotta engage with their answer. Share your own aspirations. You're not just exchanging business cards here, you're creating connections, you're building relationships. And those, my friends, last a lot longer than a business transaction. Chapter 10. Compliment her on something other than her looks. Hey, my dude, listen. Complimenting a girl on her looks, it's an old hat, okay? Everyone's doing it, so why follow the herd? What if I told you that there's another way? A way that'll make you stand out from the crowd? When you approach a girl, forget the usual, Hey, beautiful, or, Ah, you are one attractive individual. <laughs> Switch that up. Compliment her on something other than her looks. Maybe she's got a killer sense of style, or maybe she carries herself with an air of confidence that catches your eye. So it's unique qualities that can make a huge impact. So, how do you do this? You spot her across the room, you walk over all cool like, <clears throat> you say, Hey, I noticed you from across the room. Uh, your style's really unique, it, uh, it's caught my eye. Wham, you just complimented her, but not on her looks. You've shown her that you notice more than just physical appearance. You've shown her that you appreciate individuality. Don't just say it, mean it. I know I keep saying that, but I wouldn't repeat myself if people didn't make it about themselves all the damn time. God, it's tiring. If you don't genuinely appreciate the quality that you're complimenting, she'll notice, trust me. Chapter 11, The Personal Story. Moving on to the networking scene. How about we add a personal touch to your conversation starter arsenal? Enter the personal story opener. I'm not exactly suggesting that you start off by sharing your deepest secrets, fears, or whatever your most embarrassing moments. What I'm suggesting is that you weave a relatable personal experience into the conversation. Did you just travel to a place that they mentioned? Did you recently read a book in their field of expertise? Did you just take a course on a topic that they're passionate about? Share that. You see, people love stories, and they love it even more when they can actually connect with them. It's a subtle way of showing them, hey, we got something in common. Chapter 12. Who is the most influential person in your life? Take the time to ask her, who's the most, well, probably don't say influential person, probably say, who's the most important person in your life? Now, before you get go off on me, hear me out here. <laughs> yeah, that sounds a bit heavy for a text, but... That's the point, my friend. We're aiming to get a little bit personal because it shows that you care. It shows that you're interested in who she is on the inside, not just a pretty face in her profile pic. This question tells her that you're genuinely interested in knowing who's shaped her, who's inspired her to become who she is today. And again, try not to be too professional. You're not interviewing her. And her answer is going to tell you so much about what she values, what she respects, what kind of people she admires. And hey, you might even find some common ground in her answer. She might name someone who's also influenced you. Chapter 13. The Can You Help Me? Opener. Alright, ready for another networking gem? Meet the Can You Help Me? Opener. Asking for help shows humility. It shows a willingness to learn and respect the other person's expertise. And who doesn't love to share what they know? So, you approach someone, maybe someone you've admired from afar for their work, or maybe someone you think has the knowledge that you need, and you just say, I got a situation. I was really hoping you could help me out. You see, this doesn't just start a conversation. It starts a meaningful interaction. That person, they're going to remember you. They'll remember that you were the one that was eager to learn, who respected their knowledge enough to ask for it. And maybe down the line, they might just be asking you for help. Who knows? Chapter 14. The Bucket List Opener Alright, dude, imagine this. You're texting her and the conversation is just dragging on like a snail on a lazy Sunday. You know what you need? A big old jolt of juice, excitement, and I've got just the thing. So, uh, what are some of the things in your bucket list? What do you want to do before you kick the bucket? Oh, hey, that's why they call it the bucket list. You know, whatever, be, be cute. It's an instant adrenaline rush. Suddenly, she's not just typing on her phone anymore. She's, she's skydiving or backpacking through Europe or singing on a stage in a crowd of thousands. And who's there with her, even just in spirit? Yep, bing, bing, bingo, that's right, it's you, my man. So show interest. Ask follow-up questions. Imagine that adventure with her. She tells you she wants to go backpacking, buy tickets to go to Europe right then and there. I'm just kidding, obviously. Chapter 15. Ask her where she comes from. 
Now, what's the first thing that pops into your mind when you want to know more about someone? You ask about their roots, their beginnings, their home. Where do you come from? See, this question isn't just about her physical location. It's not just about the city or the town she grew up in. It's about her experiences, her culture, her family. It's the foundation of the being that she's become. People's roots shape them. And by asking this question, you're showing interest in not just the current her, but the real her. The one that goes beyond what's on the surface. And let me tell you, dude, the stories you can uncover with this simple question, oh my god, you're going to be amazed at how much you can learn from a singular question. <laughs> Chapter 16. The Have you heard about Opener? Here's the things about networking events. They are filled with people that are there to learn, to grow, to innovate. So, hit them with something new, something fresh. Have you heard about the latest development in our industry? Or have you heard about the upcoming conference? This one's a hell of an opener. One, it shows that you're on top of your game, you're knowledgeable, and you're keeping up with the latest trends and updates in your field. And two, it's a great conversation starter. Even if they haven't heard about what you're mentioning, they're going to be interested, and that sparks a conversation. And if they have, well, then you got yourself a nice little discussion going. Either way, you're engaging with them on a meaningful level, and that's a win in my book. Chapter 17. What do you look for in a guy? You be texting her, making her laugh making her think, but now you want to know where you stand. So what do you do? You ask her outright is what you do. Don't waste any time. What do you look for in a guy? Yeah, it's a bold move, but here's the thing. It's not just about what she says. It's about how she says it. Is she flippant, not taking it seriously? Maybe she's not into you as much as you are, as you thought she might be. So if she's specific, is she mentioning traits that you have? Well, then brother, you're in. If she starts listing off qualities that sound suspiciously like you, then she's been thinking about you in that way. Trust me. Chapter 18. The Biggest Challenge Opener You approach someone, and maybe it's someone you admire, someone you've done your homework on, and you ask, what's the biggest challenge you face in your career? You just got real. You just show that you're not there for small talk, you're there for the big guns. You want to learn from their experiences, their trials, and people respect that. People respect how serious you are about your industry, but uh, also it shows empathy. You're asking about their difficulties, their challenges. That shows that you see them as more than just a business contact, but as a human being with their own unique journey. And who knows, their story might just inspire your own career path. Alright, remember guys, these are conversation starters, openers. The rest is up to you. I really hope uh, that this helps you break the ice. It's up to you to keep it flowing after that, though, so <laughs> good luck.